Uh oh. Welcome, seriously, welcome to a John Leg Fragrance Review. I really appreciate you coming to this channel. I appreciate your time, I appreciate your visit, and I thank you for coming here. And you are a most respected and welcome and honored guest. So I thank you for coming. Right, I need to talk to you about a fragrance which I consider to be a legendary fragrance. Okay, now, every now and then a fragrance is launched and it's like a star, you know, it's a standout sort of fragrance. And it may have brought something new to the table, it may start a whole new vibe, it may be something which is really quite different and, and sort of never done before, or it may have like a cult following. But whatever it is, every now and then, there is a fragrance which embodies those things, okay? And I would class them as legendary fragrances. Now, like them or loathe them, legendary fragrances do bring something amazing to our fragrance world. Okay, what about, I don't know, Creed Aventus? That brought something completely new, that brought a new vibe. And what about Baccarat Rouge 540? What about Paco Rabanne 1 million? You know, you may be there going, oh, Leggy, I don't really like these fragrances. Like them or loathe them, they all brought something amazing to our fragrance world. And how many times have those which I've just mentioned been copied, been cloned, been inspired by? You know what? People like these fragrances. And you may not be able to afford those legendary fragrances, or you may not particularly like them, but you'll like what they have inspired and changed in our fragrance world. In the 1980s, early in the 1980s, YSL, Yves Saint Laurent, launched what I consider to be a legendary fragrance. And it was called Kuros. Okay? It was the white, sort of satin white bottle with the chrome prims. And you know what? It was an ultra alpha male fragrance. Slightly sweet, in an 80s, 1980s sort of sweet way. Slightly floral and slightly earthy with a sort of a weird sort of animal sort of vibe at the bottom. And of course, oak moss, which defines the 80s. But we'll talk about the ingredients in a minute. So in 1981, I believe it was, this fragrance was launched. And I cannot tell you how into this fragrance I was. If I was to try and remember how many bottles of the Eau de Toilette, the spray, the 100ml I had, I'm guessing I was in double figures of the bottles that I got through. And unfortunately, I do not have an original bottle. I've finished them all, and I don't tend to keep my bottles. I tend to, you know, recycle them or whatever. So I don't have an original bottle. And I was that into it. I went and I bought the aftershave splash and the soap, which came in a little dish, a little plastic dish, the soap, not the shower gel. It was the soap. And then I had the deodorant spray. And you know what? I absolutely loved Kuros. It ticked every box for me. And yes, it defined the 1980s, but for me, it defined a time in my life when I was becoming like from a boy to a man. I was setting off on that amazing journey, which we tend to call life. And it got me through so many things and it kept me going quite often, this amazing fragrance called Kuros. Now, I managed to get myself a sample of the current remake and if you can see it, there you go, YSL Kuros, it is an EDT, the originals were EDT, but you know what, back in the day it didn't matter whether it was an EDT or an EDP or an Intense, because they all in the 80s, they all lasted, they all projected, you could smell everyone's fragrance and you could sort of, you know, you could guarantee your fragrance would last all day, okay, there was no worries about it, you know, dropping off after a few hours, these, they were all amazing strong fragrances. So let me spray this sample that I've got for you and let me try and tell you why I consider this to be a legend. Okay. Now I've got to be careful here because there are so many memories caught in those scent notes for me. It, is, it just whipped me straight back to the 80s. 
Well, let me try and focus on the actual fragrance for you. So what are you going to smell when you smell this? Now, I will admit that this current remake is turned down slightly. It's not quite as aggressive in places as the original was. It's not quite as earthy. It's not quite as animal-like. It's Oh, okay, it's still a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, and I'll come to in a minute whether I think it's still worth you buying it, but it's not quite as raw and as amazing as it was back in the 80s. But fair play to YSL, this remake definitely picks up on that original smell. Right, at the top, you've got a, a little bit of freshness given by the bergamot and then you've got sort of a weird sort of sweet freshness given by sort of like a coriander seed. Then under that freshness you've got like, okay, it's an amazing bouquet of flowers. You've, you've got some geranium, you've got some carnation, you've got some jasmine and you know what I, I you will never actually pick out each individual floral it's just like handing someone a bouquet of flowers it really is that amazing sort of mid part of this fragrance you've also got a little bit of cinnamon in there a dash of cinnamon it's not too obvious but you may pick up on the cinnamon and at the bottom you've got that sort of very animal sort of note you've got um, a little smidge of vanilla, you've got some sort of patchouli which gives it that sort of earthy sort of vibe um, and you've, okay, you've got oak moss which pretty much defines 1980s fragrances, okay. This was not a unisex fragrance, this Kuros was very much a men only fragrance, this was alpha male and this seriously got attention, right? It was very loud in terms of its projection and it was very long in terms of it, it did all day. You didn't have to worry about it tailing off. You knew it was going to last all day, right? Okay, now, why do I consider this to be a legendary fragrance, right? Now, if you start to smell a lot of other 80s, 1980s fragrances, they all pick up on that Kuros vibe. It's a little bit like Creed Aventus, and then you've got things like Savage and Blood of Chanel and all the different fragrances that pick up on that sort of blue sort of vibe that Creed Aventus sort of started, if you like, or sort of rippled or whatever you want to call it, yeah? So, Kuros defined the 80s and everyone else was inspired by this amazing fragrance. Now, I've got to be really careful because for me, the, the memories are so caught up in this. So would I say to you, go out and buy this fragrance because for 100 ml, I believe you'll spend maybe between 45 and 65 pound depending on if you get a good offer. Would I say to you, rush out and buy this? Okay, now, the younger guys watching this uh, review are going to be going, I've never quite smelled Kuros, but I've heard a lot about it. The older guys are probably nodding, going, leggy, I agree with you, it's a legend, it's a classic, and all that sort of stuff, right? So, would I recommend everyone goes out and buys it? No, I wouldn't. Because the problem is with this fragrance is that upon smelling it, you'll say a couple of things. You'll say, Leggy, it's kind of a little bit dated. Leggy, it's kind of very 1980s. And then you'll say things to me like, Leggy, we've kind of moved on. The world's moved on. We're into different vibe of fragrances. All right. When I say this is a sweet sort of fragrance with earthy undertones, the sweetness is not like we have these days. You know, if someone wants to make a sweet fragrance now, they use pear, they use cinnamon, they use vanilla, tonka, uh, and they use sort of caramel to make it sweet. This is sweet, but in, I will admit, in a 1980s kind of sweetness way. Okay, so when you smell it, you will say to me, Leggy, it's dated. And that's it. All right. 
I'm not going to tell you to rush out and buy this fragrance, even though the performance of the current EDT is solid. You will smell it on you all day long. And for about two, two and a half hours, it actually projects very, very nicely. OK, get it on your clothes and it's there for a couple of days. That's the current Eau de Toilette. So even though it's been reformulated and reformulated and reformulated, the current remake is a very, very good copy of the original smell. Slightly turned down in terms of it's made it slightly softer, maybe slightly more wearable, maybe slightly more palatable for someone who's trying it for the first time. But in terms of the performance, it's solid. OK, I'm not going to tell you to rush out and buy this fragrance. Maybe go and smell it, maybe sample it, whatever. But what I would ask you is one of two things. First of all, have a deep respect for the classics. You know, whether that be Baccarat Rouge 540, whether it be Creed Aventus, whether it be this Kuros, whatever fragrance is a classic, is a legend, have a deep respect for it. Because whether you like it or whether you loathe it, it brought something new and amazing to the fragrance world. And the other thing I would say to you is, please, please, never write Kuros off. Because, you know, fragrances go in fashions. They have trends. And you know what? Sometimes trends and fashions repeat. And I would not ever say that this would not come back into vogue. Never write Kuros off. OK, so I hope you understand. I've been honest with you. I've been open with you. I haven't told you to rush out and buy it. I've recommend you smell it. But I've asked you just to have some respect for this amazing, legendary, classic fragrance. Thank you for coming to this channel. A thumbs up would be awesome. A subscription would be amazing. And a comment. Let me know if you are still rocking Kuros, whether you rocked it in the past, whether you think it's suitable for today's wearer. Let me know and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Much love, much respect and thank you for coming to this channel. Take care. Spray fragrance every single day. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.